All right, we're out here at El Viso. Here's um, last week's footage, and it's a good one. It was super fun, probably the most fun I've had at a race so far. I think this is about my ninth time at El Viso, and each time I feel like I just have more fun. I get a little bit faster, I get a little bit better. Um, I can make more friends, it's just, it's all, it's all good. So I was a little bit late to the race, so I gave myself a little bit of a effort to catch onto the peloton. I didn't start off the lap with everyone um, but yeah today was a great day I came in with a couple goals like usual um, one of my big goals was to not lose the wheel I feel like I'm always losing people's wheels and turns and um, and when I'm cornering and it, I always have to use extra effort and it's just a pain for people behind me and so that was one big goal uh, another one was just to stay smart and not move up when it wasn't a good opportunity. So trying to always move up for free, I guess as people call it, and not use much effort. And then the big goal was of course to win and I cannot win with a field sprint. So I have to get it in a break. So I'm always trying to look out for the breaks, which I think I did a great job of trying to initiate breaks and then ultimately being in one that actually went the distance, kind of but we'll see that later. Um, today, it was just two teammates, me and Donald, and we didn't really talk before the race, and we didn't really work together super well. There was one moment we, where we had good teamwork, but most of the time, it was kind of just, we are kind of just racing for, um, for ourselves, but that's all good. Um, yeah, so let's fast forward to my first little little effort. All right, we fast forwarded. There's a couple people off the front right now. You can see them just ahead. And someone's putting in a little bit of a dig on the front to try to close the gap a bit, but now it's slowing down. So I moved to the outside and I was just about to bridge up, but then I see Donald sticking the wheel. I can't exactly see who that is up ahead. And so now Donald has a bit of a gap. There's, there's kind of gaps opening up. So I was gonna, gonna let Donald try to close that gap. I thought about actually completely losing this wheel here and just letting that group of four like get up and put a little chase effort in but I just stuck in the wheel and so right here Donald kind of um, slows up and I take it as a good opportunity to launch so I launch past them to get up to the break so maybe I can reignite what's going on up there and we can get a gap and keep going so I get up here stick in the wheel um, I see there's four of us, and all really strong guys. I had faith that this could actually go all the way. I'd actually like never looked back, so I didn't even know what was going on behind me or if we had still had the gap. But I'm just gonna pull through here, just at a pretty standard watt, just to keep things rolling. But I thought it was a pretty good move on my part, just to kind of make the quick jump because it wasn't that big of a distance and I didn't have to um, bring anyone else in my draft because I jumped quick enough where no one kind of followed me up there. So I thought it was a good move and then Donald could then rest and he could recover. So we're coming into this right hand turn and there's actually a car up ahead and everyone's like yelling and screaming and saying, ah, car, 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 slow down, slow down. And there's a little bit of craziness so then I just took us opportunity to attack again because we were just about to get caught and so I said oh you know we're going into the tailwind people are gonna have to chase me back and everyone's kind of disrupted from that car and how things were playing out so I thought that was another good opportunity to use a match and I try to take the more racing line instead of going outside that right hander that kind of right hand bend I stuck to the the yellow line because I know a lot of people, including myself, always try to stick to the outside. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was a pretty good use of, um, of effort. I think I just sit up here and let, let myself get caught because people the people were putting on a big chase effort and I was just not gonna go solo the whole way. So it was an um, effort, no one followed me and it's all good. So we fast forwarded a little bit. Um, there's a group of guys off the front and Sean is right in front of me putting in some effort to get him back and 
I just decided, hey, you know, I've rested up. I've only had, you know, one, two small attacks. So I just get on the front and close that gap down. And I do it pretty quickly because I'm in the tailwind. And so I feel like in the tailwinds, I can get away with putting in a lot more effort because everyone has to do effort behind me. I think that's kind of how it works. Whereas in the headwind, if I put in a big effort, everyone's getting a really awesome draft behind me. So I'm basically helping everyone out. And instead right now in the tailwind, I'm doing a better job of helping myself out. So the group in front of me, they're still going full gas. I mean, we're going, you know, 32, 33 miles an hour. And then I think I pull off just here and someone um, comes through. Yeah, there goes Jerome and there's Donald. And Donald actually pulls the same move I pulled earlier in the race. So before when Donald stitched it up and then I sprinted to the break, this time I brought us back close enough to where Donald could bridge. And then Donald got up there just to see if he could reignite something. But um, it all gets shut down pretty quick. And um, we'll fast forward to where I get that break to stick. Okay, I've been in the pack, just resting up, trying to work on my positioning skills, my pack riding, all that good stuff that just takes years to work on and that everyone out here at Alviso has just absolutely mastered. Um, there's Sean right next to me, and then these group of three is kind of up the road, but then people kind of drop back. Um, so now Andrew from Cortex is up the road, and so I saw that Jerome was in my wheel, and I figured, hey, maybe I could attack, have Jerome in my wheel, and it could be me, Jerome, and Andrew off the front, which is a group I had 100% confidence would make it to the end. Um, but it turned out that Jerome ended up not following my wheel. I got up here to Andrew, and just about here, I said, hey, like I'm here, like let's work together, I'll pull through. He's got that brand new S-Works Venge, beautiful looking bike, dream bike. Um, and so yeah, we just start rotating right now. And at this point, I didn't really have much faith in the two of us being able to make it all the way. Um, the one thing that was going for us was that we had a pretty big gap and it was relatively easy to create that gap. Um, and so Andrew gets to the front and Andrew really set the pace during this um, breakaway attempt. Like, I just didn't know what pace to hold to be able to stay away. And Andrew has just been racing for forever. And so he knows exactly what's up. Um, but I was, not not yet was I getting cooked, but I was already feeling, feeling in the muscles for sure. Um, as you can see, the heart rate's at 193 and it was a pretty cold day so that was a really um, um, high heart rate for me and so there's a car right there and I'm like oh god with that car like should we even commit anything to this break um, but I come past him I say hey we got four laps to go like let's get after it like, let's do it and he's like all right let's get after it so we just put our heads down and just started grinding I think the poles that I was putting out were about like three 80 to 420 usually um, which is absolutely like above threshold for me <laughs> and so you'll see Andrew takes um, much longer pulls than I do just because I mean he's just a way stronger guy than um, than me um, so yeah we just rotate like this and we can fast forward a little bit of this um, uh, breakaway Alright, at this point, we now have three people in the break. Someone has bridged up to us. Um, I ride with him, you know, every week. I always forget his name. <laughs> One day I'll remember. Um, and Andrew actually just came past me and said, Oh, we got... Um, one lap to go, we're coming into the last lap. And me, just being absolutely cooked, like I can't even think straight. 
I, you know, I'm going cross-eyed in this in this breakaway attempt, just like absolutely giving everything I can. I say, yep, we have one lap to go. When in the back of my mind, I feel like it doesn't sound right, but there's just I, there's just no way to think about what, like what lap I'm on. I mean, I just can't think it through. So that guy peels off, Andrew's on the front now, and we're just absolutely just shredding it. We've averaged 27.2 miles an hour the whole race, which is a very fast Alviso. Um, usually it's about 26 and a half to 26. Um, and the fact that I was in a breakaway for, you know, a little less than half of it, it just shows how just a gr how much of a great rider Angie was to really be grinding on these um, these uh, these poles on the front because he I mean he's taking this whole headwind section I take a little bit of sorry he's taking the whole tailwind section and I take a little bit of the headwind and then the other guy takes some of the headwind and then I'm back on the f um, on the crosswind and then. Andrew brings us into the tailwind, and it's like that. It's just not a very equal distribution of the time, but I mean, it was the only way for us to stay away because I just did not really like have the have the legs in me. Um, so here I am going to start to try to take a pull, but then the other guy's like, "No, no, I'm I'm about to fall off. Let me let me let me hop in the front," because at this point we're thinking this is our last lap. Like we just have to make it to the end. And um, the chasing peloton is getting closer this lap, very, very close. We've been doing a great job of holding them off, and if they get a little closer, we take a little harder pulls, and which is just so demoralizing if you're in the field and it's like you're so close to catching the breakaway, but you, you just can't. Um, so we're doing a great job, but then here he pulls off, and it's up to me to take like another big pull, um, and yeah, now. I'll, Let's fast forward to coming into that final final stretch. All right, here's the crosswind section. You can see on the map, it's the crosswind coming into the final tailwind. Andrew's on the front, which is not looking good for me, considering I know he's going to pull off before we get to um, the tailwind, and then I'm going to have to get on the front and use up my energy before we obviously sprint for the line. So I was not super confident going into this um, final turn, and just knowing how how strong Andrew is, I had very little confidence I was even going to be able to pull off a sprint at all, um, let alone one over a thousand watts that would have done damage. And actually, right now we get um, we get caught by um, Dave, another. Uh, person from the peloton and he bridged up to us thinking that there was you know all another another lap to go in the race but Andrew and I we we thought there was the last lap so Andrew starts to sprint early I get up there to 900 watts and we're just trading we're trading blows at the moment we're just going head to head head to head and finally Andrew just pulls back a little bit and I'm able to uh, coast in for the win I thought that was the finish line but then I realized the finish line is just up ahead do a little bit more of an effort and um, there it is. So I thought I'd actually won at that point, but um, I was. I, so I turned off the camera. It's all good. We won, but unfortunately, there was another lap to the race. So really fun, but I didn't end up actually winning my first Alviso race. It's all good. I'll be back out there next week, and we'll try to get the the dub for real.